Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another housing webinar here with the University of Wisconsin Green Bay Housing and Residential Education team. We are so excited to have you here with us this month as we talk about campus jobs and financial aid. We do have a bunch of awesome guests that we'll introduce as we go throughout the night. Um, but as always, if you're not able to stick around for the whole presentation, you can always catch the recording on our YouTube channel the next day. You can also check out all of our sessions from the last semester slash few months on there as well if you want to check out any of the information we've shared throughout this year. But with that, we're going to dive into things and get going because we have a lot of great content to cover. So again, welcome to the webinar. We're so excited to have you. Um, and we are talking about campus jobs and financial aid tonight. So if you are here for that session, awesome. If you want to go watch a different one, feel free to. Um, but we'll be talking about all sorts of things to help you get set up for financial st stability here on campus. So quick introductions of who we are. My name is Lindsay Likas. I am one of the assistant directors for housing and residential education here at UWGB. Um, we do not have Mike Riley with us tonight, but he is also another assistant director who helped put this presentation together. I'm going to let Peter introduce himself really quickly, um, and then I'll have the rest of the campus partners introduce themselves when they talk a little bit later on. So with that, Peter, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is uh, Pete Zhang. I am one of the financial aid officers in the uh, financial aid office, and I'm also a proud alum of UWGB. Thank you. And then, like I said, our list of campus partners will introduce themselves later on as they talk about job opportunities with their specific departments. There's a lot of them, and I don't want you to forget their faces, so I figured it'd be easier to do things that way. Um, but you can always check out more information about our teams and our specific departments online on our websites. There's a screenshot of the housing one here, but every department that's present tonight has a great website with lots of information, resources, information about their specific staffs, and all sorts of fun stuff that we highly encourage you to check out after the webinar. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Pete, and he's going to kick us off with all of the fun financial aid questions, comments, and all sorts of tips and tricks. So there you go, Peter. Take it away. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so in the presentation here, I know there's a lot of information about just uh, financial aid in general. Uh, I'm just going to talk about some of the uh, information, some of the things that are going to be uh, things that you'll probably be seeing um in kind of your journey as you make the transition to uh uwgb so just a few reminders that i want to touch on i know we're getting close to uh the end of the month and there's a few things i just want to highlight and then want to talk about some of the things that will be kind of uh happening uh in the next uh, few months uh for uh many of you and then some of the uh, information that you'll be seeing kind of give you some uh steps in kind of uh, what that's going to look like and then finally, I'll have some time for some questions as well, too. But we'll also have our contact information uh, that you can reach out to us if you have any uh, additional questions as well. So first, I want to touch on just a few reminders. Uh, first and foremost, uh, if you have not completed your FAFSA uh, through the uh, Federal Student Aid website, uh, you still have time to complete that. If you still have some checklist items in your um, SIS accounts, um, Feel free to reach out to our office if you have any questions about that, but you can continue to complete the uh, FAFSA for the fall 23 and the spring 24. Uh, and you can go to the studentaid.gov website to uh, complete that application. So I want to remind you to complete that if you haven't done so. And if you are looking forward to continuing uh, applying for FAFSA, just know that this is something that you'll continue to uh, apply for, uh, usually in the fall uh, as you uh, look for aid for the following year. So it's just a reminder for that if you haven't done so. The upcoming year, uh, more information will be kind of released about that. So just keep an eye on that uh, for this upcoming fall. And the uh, final item is the scholarships. Our scholarship will be closing up um, by the end of this week. So just want to let you know that if you haven't applied, you have that opportunity to do so before this final deadline uh, for the scholarship. Um, if you apply for a scholarship, just know that we will continue to kind of share with students as scholarships opportunities become available. Uh, so if you have, haven't heard back from us, just uh, keep an eye on your UWGB email because if there is an aid uh, for a uh, award that's available to you, we will be sharing that with you. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So the first thing I want to touch on is going to be the offer letter. Uh, many of you will uh, have received this uh, sometime in uh, early spring. Uh, so I want to just highlight a little bit the offer letter that you receive. Uh, things in the offer letter that you've seen will be things uh, probably in the top 
part uh, about your uh, what we call the estimated cost of attendance. Uh, so you see some of that information, kind of the breakdown of some of the information about your tuition books and etc. There's some indirect costs and some direct costs. So some of that information is kind of highlighted there with some of the figures that we've kind of shown for you. That's kind of broken into the annual cost as well as the fall and the spring terms. In addition to that, in that offer letter, you saw information about the types of aid that you were available uh, uh, or eligible for. So you'll see that information in the offer letter as well too. Uh, more information about your grants, uh, kind of in the middle section and towards the bottom, you'll see more information about any loans that you'd be eligible for. So that information is kind of highlighted there. And finally, uh, we do have um, more information uh, on the next page of that offer letter that kind of gives you more information about the next steps and information that you'll see there. So I know this slide has a lot of arrows pointing in many different directions, so uh, I'm just going to touch on a few items here for you to kind of just see and highlight. This is something that if you're not familiar with and you haven't logged into your uh, SIS account or what we call a student information uh, system, uh, you'll be able to see that um, information here and get familiar with this because this is something that you'll uh, uh, really uh, see and use a lot as well too. But a few of the items that I've kind of highlighted really connects to our office in the financial aid. So um, you'll see that you can accept and decline your uh, loan offers uh, um, in the SIS as well too. If you look at the center of the page there, there's that big uh, rectangle uh, that really is a, a great um, view for you if you're looking at some of the uh, upcoming charges that you might see you'll see it there and that's usually kind of posted for each term and has more information for you to view for that. The next thing I want to touch on is a uh, left hand side of the screen here you'll see information just under finances. If you click on that that will kind of give you a drop down menu that has more information uh, that really you know, kind of connects about your payment options with managing your refunds. So those are where some of that information is kind of stored and you can access that information uh, when you log into your SIS account. In addition to that, you'll see more information a bit about like the historical information if you apply for FAFSA from the previous year. So for the upcoming years, you'll see that information there as well too in the view financial aid. So that will give you a bit more information if you're looking for some of the of, of anticipated funds that might be available to you. And then finally, in the uh, left hand side, just below that, you'll see uh, a drop down menu for all of uh, finance information. This is a great uh, drop down menu. It has a lot of good information stored in here. So when you open this up, you can see account activity, charges due, and you can kind of see some of that information. If you have any upcoming terms or just things that you're anticipating, you'll see some of those charges there. You can kind of keep a track of that information there. And finally, on the right hand side, you'll see some information here that kind of pertains to uh, uh, some of you. So in this screen here under the to do list on the right hand side, you'll see that there's a few items that are listed there. So uh, this shows uh, a student who has not completed their FAFSA uh, and they have some of uh, what we call to do list items that need to be completed before we can process their FAFSA. So great information here when you click on those items it has a hyperlink. It gives you description and information about what needs to be completed and also contact information to our office in case uh, you are unsure of how to complete those uh, documents. You can reach out to our office about that. So that's just a bit of glimpse of the uh, student uh, services that you'll see uh, center here when you log into your SIS and just want to give you a preview if you haven't gone into that. So once you've accepted uh, your uh, loans, uh, you'll also have that opportunity to dive in and complete what we call uh, this two step process. So for first time uh, borrowers, uh, you just have to do this once um, when you um, accept a loan and it is uh, the two step process is uh, one is called the loan entrance counseling and then the other is the master uh, uh, master or promissory note or MPN. Uh, they take about probably about 30 minutes each to kind of complete that and how you can complete that is you go into the federal student aid website uh, where you completed your FAFSA and it gives you information how to complete that. So there's a dashboard that's available to you uh, once you uh, uh, log into your dashboard. You have that opportunity to complete either one of those and it's important that you complete these two steps because if you don't complete these then your uh, 
federal loans will not disperse and they won't be available to you uh, and deposit into your account. So if you're expecting some of those disbursement, we encourage that you get this completed prior to uh, your loans being dispersed. So this is a step that a lot of our students miss out and then they have to go back and complete. So it does take um, you know, a few days for the process to be completed before we actually receive confirmation for each of those steps. So it's important that uh, you get this completed. And again, you just have to do this once. And once you get that completed, then you don't have to go through that, uh, uh, the two steps. And it's just kind of highlighting a bit about the terms that you are um, looking at for the federal loans, but also information about um, some of the uh, budgeting and opportunities that the federal government has kind of laid out for you. So it's a really interactive module. It's great for you if you haven't done this before. So we encourage you to get this completed before uh, your loans. So I talked a bit about the disbursement of aid, and this is something that uh, you'll kind of see that we disperse uh, aid uh, usually um, a few days before beginning of a term. So for this upcoming fall, for example, you'll see that some of that information will be uh, kind of closer to the uh, end of August as we get uh, close to the start of the semester in early September. So that information, and we'll kind of touch on that a bit here, but that's what disbursement means. So we usually disperse uh, any aid to students as we get close to the beginning of a term. So the information that you see here, again, I'm going to refer back to the SIS account that you will be seeing. Uh, you'll see some of that information there, kind of see what um, you know your bill looks like, and then that disbursement will kind of happen as we near the start of the semester. In addition to that, we also encourage students to sign up for e-refunds or electronic refunds, and that's the quickest way for you to receive um, any aid. If you have any um, excessive aid, uh, we call that a refund, so you can get that deposited directly into your account, and then you'll have access to that to use uh, uh, to purchase any additional items that you might need uh, for your educational expenses. So this is something that we encourage students to sign up for. All right, so there's a lot on this screen here, so I'll kind of break it down for you a little bit here and kind of talk about some of these steps here. So uh, we do have an office called the Student Billing Resources Office, and we work closely with them. And they're the office that kind of oversees some of the uh, um, uh, aid when students receive that, any scholarships or uh, any billings and charges that you have. That's kind of the office that we connect students with. So uh, you'll see on the right hand side that we have a uh, calendar for the upcoming fall term and this information kind of shows you a bit of kind of the uh, landscape uh, what's coming up in the uh, fall semester. So again in uh, early August you'll start to see some of those charges in your SIS account um, and then we'll begin dispersing uh, aid to students as we near the start of the uh, semester. And as you see that, there's also some important deadlines and information there for you to keep in mind as well too as you are uh, looking at your charges. So uh, at the 10th day of classes, that's when um, the uh, charges will be um, due to your account. So you'll see that that is September 19th for this upcoming fall. Um, and there is a one-time late fee for that as well too. So if you miss that deadline, there's a $7 per credit and it goes up to a maximum of $84 uh, for the one-time charge. And then there's more information about like a payment plan, for example, too. So you'll see that in uh, kind of the late lit October, October, uh, you'll see there is a payment plan for any students who say still have a balance on their account that will automatically be put into that payment plan. And then after that, as we head into November, there is a 1% uh, monthly finance charge that will be assessed on the uh, remaining balance. So that is something that will be on there. So just keep that in mind. If you do have any questions, we encourage you to reach out to the Student Building Resources Office. They can kind of work with you on a payment plan as well as answer any questions about any charges that you have of that. I touch a bit on the e-funding as well too, so do encourage you to sign up for that. There is an opportunity for family and uh, parents and guardians to also be involved and kind of see some of those charges there or kind of help assist with some of the charges if that is something that um, they choose to. There is what we call the authorized party access and that does allow um, a student to grant um, other folks uh, in their uh, kind of close circle to kind of see some of the billing information and help, help make payments on their behalf as well.
And if you're looking at uh, funding and you just kind of figure out, you know what, um, I might need a bit more funding. Well, we have opportunities for that. Reach out to our office. Uh, we'll be happy to connect with you on that. There are a handful of the different options that we can, can, and can help you explore. Um, kind of the two big options that we can refer students to consider is one is the Parent PLUS loan. So that is something that's available to a student um, and the parent or guardian will uh, take out that uh, loan on behalf of the student. And that is uh, under the parent or guardian's name. And it's a credit base um, loan. So that is something that you go on to the uh, Federal Student Aid website where you complete your FAFSA and your parent or guardian will apply for that loan. And they kind of, the nice thing about that is they find out about that loan right away after they complete the application if they uh, have been approved. So that's uh, some information that you can find out. And then that information will get sent to our office and then we will kind of follow up and kind of move through that application process. So that way that loan could get dispersed on time. On the other hand, we also have um, private loans as well too. So. Uh, we work with all lenders and we do have a great tool on a website called Fast Choice. And Fast Choice just lists different lenders on a website that our students have used in the past three years through UWGB. So it's a great tool for you to compare different lenders um, that you can re really look at. Uh, you're welcome to look into any local lenders at your credit union or bank as well too. So uh, once you've kind of made that establishment and that re relationship with the lender, then uh, you simply just have to complete that application and they'll send that to our office and then we'll follow up with you in regards to kind of making sure that that loan gets dispersed uh, to you uh, as before you start your term. We know that things change uh, and there are things that might look a bit different when you filed your FAFSA compared to the current situation. So if you just reach out to our office, the list just gives you some of those circumstances that take place, but there are a handful of other items that we haven't listed, uh, but these are some of the common things that we do see that has an impact on your uh, FASA. So just reach out to us, let us know. Uh, we'll be happy to connect with you. We have a few different options that we can explore, maybe look at certain situations. There might be additional information that we might need to uh, pull from in order to kind of take a look closer at your FAFSA and your aid, and that's something that we'd be happy to do. So some of these things that apply to you, things that impacted you, feel free to reach out to our office. We'll be happy to have that conversation with you, even if you submitted your FAFSA or you haven't done so, we'd be happy to kind of see kind of how that might impact your aid and kind of work with you on that. So those are just great information for you to consider and you feel like you're a part of that conversation or you think you might be in that, feel free to just reach out to us and we can kind of give you uh, some guidance um, in that process. And we also uh, have um, uh, someone in our office who really works closely with our veterans as well too. So any students or dependents uh, that might uh, be receiving the GI Bill or the post 9-11 or any of those vendor benefits, just uh, feel free to reach out to our office. Nicole Stockman is our, our contact person for that. So uh, feel free to reach out to Nicole or reach out to our office and we'll get you connected to Nicole. Nicole does a great job of just making sure that everyone is uh, able to receive all of the aid that they need that applies to them. So this is something that we have that's available. So if you have any questions about this or not sure about any documents that need to be completed, or if you're just not sure if this applies to you, just reach out to our office and Nicole can kind of take over uh, and review some of the information that you have and be able to help you determine kind of what that aid looks like. And finally, um, just our contact information. So feel free to reach out to our office. Again, we are available uh, to meet in person through virtual, through telephone. Uh, meetings that we can set up um, and our office is available. So feel free to just reach out to us through email or through our phone and we'll be happy to connect with you and uh, work with you uh, regardless of at the stage of uh, where you are in your uh, process for aid. So we'd be happy to connect with you in our office. So other than that, I will kind of flip it over. Thank you.
Thanks so much, Peter. Um, I do have some questions for you, but we'll save some of those towards the end so we can get our campus partners started talking about their awesome positions. Um, but we will turn things over to our university recreation team first. So we're going to kind of rapid fire through our different campus partners that are here. But if you have any questions for them, please feel free to throw them in the chat or check out their websites after the webinar. Again, we're going to start off with the university recreation team. So I will turn things over to Jeff and Ethan to kick us off there. All right, there you go, Jeff. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for having us. My name is Jeff Willems. I use he, him, his, and I've been with University Recreation uh, for the last year. Um, absolutely love it here, and I love the atmosphere that we've been able to bring and also supply to all of our students um, with our programs. And at this time, time, I'd love to turn it over to the person who's shown me the ropes over here at UREC, both literally and figuratively, Ethan Harvey. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, my name is Ethan Harvey. I'm the Outdoor Adventure Recreation Coordinator here. Um, so I'll be giving you all a little bit of information about uh, University Recreation, affectionately known as UREC. Uh, you've already met Jeff. Um, not present tonight, we have other Jeff, uh, who is Jeff Krieger, who is our director. Uh, there's also Alex Wandersee, who's our fitness coordinator and oversees our front welcome desk uh, and the staff associated with that. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump over and uh, let's learn a little bit about the department. Um, just start off telling you a little about who we are as UREC. We're really here to serve the UW-Green Bay community, primarily students. Um, our goals are to foster development in students, provide for uh, growth in mental and physical well-being and health. Uh, and we just do that by trying to provide excellent re recreation programs for UW-Green Bay students. Um, on the top right there, you see uh, some intramural programs happening. I believe that's a basketball. I'm not a sports ball person. Um, happening in the West Gym. Bottom right there, there's some yoga going on in our uh, relatively newly refurbished group fitness studio. Um, and then bottom left over there is a picture from our recent spring break adventure trip to visit five national parks in Utah. Um, we're here to provide for students and our slogan really is what we do and that's play hard, uh, have fun and lead on. Um, so let's go to the next one. and I'll tell you a little bit about some of our job opportunities available. We have a lot of positions available uh, in university recreation. Um, it's a very large department. We are one of the largest campus employers with somewhere between 100 and 130 uh, student staff members per year. Um, before I get too far, that QR code on the bottom left there is a direct link to our student application, which gets directly emailed to us. Um, the web page there, the urec.uwgb, uh, is the page to all of our programming, which you can also find uh, the job application there. Starting with the fitness center, the folks that work for Alex Wandersee, we have fitness center attendants who are responsible for the day in and the day out of our fitness center. Uh, also group fitness instructors who are going to be teaching classes like aqua fitness, bar, dance, cardio, relaxation, yoga, Zumba, you name it. There's a very, very robust uh, schedule of group fitness classes that go on throughout the semester. And anybody who doesn't want to work for as a group fitness instructor, I highly encourage you to attend those programs. And there are also personal trainers. So these are the folks that are uh, that work directly with other people on fitness regimens, weight loss programs and things like that. Shifting over to what Jeff Willems is in charge of, uh, we're looking at intramurals. Um, so intramural official is going to be the primary uh, job under uh, Jeff Willems Bridge, um, and that's going to be uh, officiating things like badminton, volleyball, trench ball, volleyball, um, lots of lots of things involving um, different uh, varieties of sports ball. Still under Jeff, I'm going to jump over to pool and aquatics. We have plenty of availability for lifeguards in our lap pool, which is heavily utilized by Green Bay Athletics. And then we also run a very, very robust a learn to swim program. Um, so anybody with instructor experience could be a swim instructor for that program, and that's a super awesome program to be a part of. Um, jumping to general UREC. Uh, the front desk is always in need of front desk attendance. This is the face of university recreation and the first face that people see when they enter the Crest Events Center. Uh, responsible for renting out basketballs, selling Gatorades and things, um, memberships, and really just being that happy face of university recreation. We also have uh, positions for graphic designer. 
Um, those are putting together things like our Get Wrecked shirts that you see in that picture. Get Wrecked is one of our big uh, semester events that we use to kick off the fall semester. Uh, so designing shirts like that and ones for intramural champs and things like that, and also helping run the social media. And then the photographer and video videographer position who uh, attends some of our outdoor outings, goes to some of the intramural games, um, walks around the fitness center and finds happy people and gets us some of the footage for uh, some of the things we use to advertise. And last, but personally, I think not least, is you rec outdoors. And that's that's my realm of university recreation. Um, I have three main positions in my program area. Um, one being climbing tower attendant. We have a rock climbing tower in the Crest Events Center fitness area. Um, those folks are responsible for assisting people with getting geared up and learning how to rock climb. There's also the outdoor adventure center attendant position which is in the relatively newly refurbished Shorewood Center, which is actually across campus from the main recreation center. They're responsible for running, uh, learning how to kayak programs, learning how to disc golf programs, and then a 400 plus piece outdoor adventure rental equipment inventory, things like kayaks, mountain bikes, tents, and those sort of things. And then if you ask me, the coolest position in my area is the student trip coordinator. So those are the very, very, very well equipped folks that lead our outdoor adventure trips to rock climb, cross country ski, backpack, kayak, ice climb, you name it. And that's university recreation. Thanks, Ethan. Um, all right, we are going to turn it over to our student engagement center representative then, um, the wonderful Adam Novotny, and he's going to tell us about jobs over in their department. Well, thank you, Lindsay and Housing, for having us tonight, and thank you to all of you for watching. Happy to have you here. Um, yes, uh, my name is Adam Novotny. I'm the Assistant Director for our Student Engagement Center and wanted to spend a little bit of time here to tell you a little bit more about what we do, why we do it, how we do it, and how you could help us in doing those things. So um, on our next slide, we go over our mission and our vision, um, which is a lot of words there on the screen. Um, essentially, in the Student Engagement Center, um, we are working to ensure that you have the best experience possible that you can. Um, we know that you're spending time with your classes as well as studying, but we wanna provide you those experiences outside of the classroom too. So the, the what and the how, we do it through events and activities, um, student organizations and involvement, um, going on some trips as well, um, and just having that connection too between, with you, with other students, as well as with staff. Um, and the why we do it, because we value the time that you have here as a UW-Green Bay student, and we want you to look back at these days and times um, fondly. And so doing some exciting things during your time here. Um, on the screen, we have our link for our website, um, as well as QR code that you can scan. That'll take you to our Student Engagement Center website, where you can see um, our staff of eight professionals, the different things that we do, um, whether that's events and activities, so you can find something that you're interested in. Um, so next on our positions that we have here in student engagement, we wouldn't be able to do what we do without our students, and we have a variety of positions to um, that you could help us with. So one, starting with our student ambassadors. Um, our student ambassadors are a group of 40 students um, with a variety of backgrounds, hometowns, majors, um, really helping to transition um, students as they come here to Green Bay. So during the summer, they work with our GB orientation days, um, help students in getting ready to register for classes, answer questions. Um, they also will help students as they come in the fall, um, so new students during GB Welcome. So they'll be with you every step of the way through your four days of, of GB Welcome to help answer questions and guide you, and then be a support person for you after those days of GB Welcome as well. They also give tours throughout the academic year to prospective students. So working with admissions, um, they also work events for other offices, work chancellor events. Um, so they do a variety of things. Um, they're really great leaders on this campus. Um, their hours roughly, you know, they give a tour once every other week um, or as schedules allow. So it is a very flexible position. Um, with that, we do have some openings right now that you could apply for. Um, we do ask that you have one semester of uh, experience at UW-Green Bay just because you will be that transition person for UWGB. So if you're a returning student, would encourage you to apply. Uh, next, we have our Good Times Programming and Events crew. So they are student programmers who are creating events for you as students. So think about bingo nights, um, UWGB nights that happen once a month, trivia nights, um, as well as Good Times Programming have a variety of different positions 
ranging from booking musicians to come to campus or hypnotists or magicians um, or even taking trips like we did some to the Bucks game, Brewers game, also going to some local places in Green Bay too. So there are opportunities there. Um, if you've ever planned some events before, planned a homecoming, um, we're always looking for people to add to our team. Um, right now we do have an immediate opening on the events crew as well as two positions on our Good Times programming board. Um, so feel free to go to our website and check out that application process. Uh, events crew assistants, so they help and assist with some events um, like our GB nights that takes on some more staffing. Um, that is about once a month um, for a few hours. So if you're only looking to have a few hours um, over the course of a month, that'd be a good position for you. I should add our Good Times programming and events crew is about um, 12 to 15 hours a week if you're looking for that on a part time basis. Then we have our front desk assistants. So similarly, like our friends at UREC, we have a front desk in our space here in the University Union that we staff with students from 8 a.m. until about 6 p.m. So looking for some friendly faces to greet people as they come by and help answer some questions as well. Then we have a community engagement programmer. Um, they will assist one of our full time staff in finding opportunities for service and community engagement um, to connect students with. So we do have an opening for that right now. So if that interests you, check out our website. Uh, and finally, we do have an opening too for our program development assistant for commencement and cultural programs. So similarly, working with one of our full time staff on the administrative lead up to commencement um, and assisting with some cultural programs too, some heritage months, um, Kwanzaa events, soul food dinner, so a variety of those. So if that's something that interests you, please check it out. We do have our website there on the uh, page to where you can apply as well as the QR code to scan. It'll tell you which positions we're hiring for right now and it will also have a link there to be able to apply. So hope we get to see you at some events or possibly get to see you working some in the future. Thank you so much. Thanks, Adam. Um, all right, next up is our wonderful dining team. So we have Carolyn here from Chartwells and she's going to talk about all the awesome opportunities with our dining services. Thanks, Lindsay and the housing team for having me today. I'm very excited to uh, to share this with you. Um, and like uh, everyone here on this call, we are all looking for bright and shiny, friendly faces to continue to serve our students um, with the next semester. So. Um, as Lindsay said, my name is Carolyn Morrison and I am the campus dining director and I work for Chartwell's Higher Education and we partner with the University Union um, for all your dining needs. I want to switch over to the next slide. Perfect. Um, and we do have several locations for different dining opportunities and options on campus, most of them within the University Union. We also have a location in the Coffin Library and Wood Hall. Um, which are easily located through the tunnels. So when those Wisconsin winners come along, you can stay inside uh, to, to serve all your dining needs um, instead of going out outdoors at the time. Um, in addition to our regular dining offerings, we do host monthly teaching kitchens, special events on campus. We do fun giveaways. Um, we do like a love dining pop ups. Um, that one, that's one you'll see there in the corner with the free lemonade that was moving weekend. So those hot summer days, you get free lemonade away. And then uh, on cold days, we give hot chocolate away. So just a little surprise and delight that we'd like to do throughout the campus for everyone. Um, and then we also provide concessions here at the Crest Center for the basketball games and uh, volleyball. And we do also catering. So chances are if your event has food, it was made by my team. <laughs> Go to the next slide. Um, and that's where you come in. Um, because we need your help. Uh, we do have staff. Uh, we have to staff all these locations to provide these great services. So um, here is a list of the dining locations that we do have. We are um, opening two new locations this fall or new concepts, I would say this fall. Um, so we have our all you care to eat marketplace, which is a social house and that's located in the union. That's our main dining hall, our only dining hall on campus. Um, that's an all you care to eat. And then we do have four other retail locations. Um, we have a grilled cheese and melt lab um, and fry shack location. So think like cheesies or Max, but like for the grilled cheese world. So any type of cheesy goodness that you can push together with two pieces of bread, that's what's going to happen there. And then all of that loaded on fries as well. So um, if uh, if you like cheese, that's the place for you. <laughs> um, and late night, because that's also our late night option here on, on campus. It's open till 11 p.m. 
Um, we also have what we probably serve Starbucks on campus in the coffee house, which is adjacent to our convenience store. And then within the garden cafe at the main level of the library, we have a, our Phoenix Street subs, which is the campus sub shop. And alongside that, we also have our uh, Crave location, which has three concepts in one. Um, this semester, we're bringing in the Good Egg, which is a breakfast sandwich concept. We have City Mac, so that's the mac and cheese concept that we're going to be offering. And then we have Aso Latin, which is build your own burrito bowls and build your own burritos. So lots of different varieties, lots of different options, lots of different hours. Um, some open at 7 a.m., some close at 11 p.m. So there's a lot of flexibility within within those locations. You know, and we have we staff um, as short as two hours per shift, up to five hours a shift for students, um, and then two shifts minimum per week um, is what we require. And then we work around schedules. Um, obviously, whenever I talk to my students, I always say your priority here is your education, and then your second priority is any student orgs you want to be involved in or any fun activities, and then your third priority is you know to have some little spending money, and that's where we come in to help you out with that. Um, so that being said, there's a QR code in the corner. You can uh, hover over that to apply right there, um, or you can also go on Handshake. Our application is also uploaded on Handshake. Um, and then at the bottom of the screen, our Dine on Campus website is something that you can use throughout the semester to stay up to date on any events that we have or any special offerings and the uh, hours of ops for each location, plus the menus for each location. Um, in addition to the application is, is there as well. And that is all I have for you guys today and Frankie's going to take over the rest. Thanks, Carolyn. All right, we are going to turn things over to Frankie from the University Union. So it's a big encompassing type of thing. Frankie's going to talk about jobs specifically with the union. I know our student engagement friends and Carolyn and all of them function in that space as well, um, but there's lots and lots of job opportunities for us across campus. So with that, I will turn things over to Frankie. Awesome. Thanks, Lindsay. Super excited to talk about some of our employment opportunities today. Uh, much like UREC, we also employ a lot of student employees every semester, um, probably about 100. Um, and we have a super wide range of jobs available, you know, whether this is your very first job right out of high school or if you're looking for more of a leadership experience, um, we have a lot of options. So, um, Lindsay, if you advance, there's a lot of information here on the next slide. Um, so like Lindsay said as well, the University Union is, we like to think of it as, you know, the living room of campus or um, even like the heartbeat of campus. This is really where we like students to come um, and really feel comfortable and, you know, make their memories here. So we have a lot of staff um, here to make sure that our building is clean and comfortable for you. Um, and, you know, working with Carolyn's team to make sure that you have all the the food options you could possibly need or want in our building as well. Um, so some of our um, employment areas include these seven options that are on the screen. I'll kind of go through each one of them. Um, so financial services. Our students in financial services um, work with money, as you can probably imagine by the title. Um, they, they count money for some of our different retail locations. They work with student organizations with their budgets. Um, really good if you're um, majoring you know, in finance or marketing or you're just really Really good with money. Um, we also have some positions open um, that are related to sustainability. So we do have one intern right now who works with our composter machine um, as well as um, the different plants in our building, um, making sure that you know they stay alive and are well watered and everything. Um, but we really do value sustainability both in our building and across campus. So that's a very exciting position. Um, our building operations team, that is our largest student team in the University Union. So um, we have a building manager position. Um, that position is exactly what it sounds like. They manage the building. Um, they really make sure that things stay running after the full time staff go home for the day. Um, they open and close our building. They are also that that point of contact for clients who are using spaces in our building um, just to make sure that everything's going well. You know, they're there to help answer questions and make sure um, that any concerns are um, attended to right away. And then the BST position, which is similar to a building manager, that stands for building services team. They help um, turn over rooms, do a little light custodial work, um, assist the building managers with, every, with anything they need. Um, so that is a great entry level position as well. 
um, our reservationists um, because we do uh, rent out our rooms in our building and serve a lot of campus partners. Um, our reservationists help make those re reservations in the rooms um, and just help with making sure that our campus calendar is up to date and keep in contact with clients to make sure that their events run smoothly. Um, and then finally in building operations, our audio, visual, light, sound technicians um, are vital to making sure our events in, our, in the building run smoothly. Um, this would be a great opportunity, maybe if you worked um, like in theater in high school or have any general knowledge of microphones, lighting, um, audio, visual needs, um, that's a great position for that. Moving on to customer service, um, we have a great opportunity at our University Ticketing and Information Center, which is a very long name for our front desk in the building. Um, those folks help answer questions um, about the University Union and beyond. Um, we get a lot of phone calls, you know, of um, you know, either members of the community or parents or even students just wondering, um, you know, where they can go if they have a question um, and those folks help them out with that. They also do ticket sales for different events on campus. Um, they support university IDs um, and they're just really that friendly face that when you walk in the building, um, they can help direct you where you need to go. Um, and then our food service venue, the Phoenix Club, um, is a entirely self-operated um, food service venue. Um, so if you have experience in food service, that would be a great option for you. Um, a little bit newer is our esports area. Super exciting area if you're into gaming, whether that's casual or competitive. Um, lots of different leadership opportunities in that area, or if you just want to um, help with assisting the lounge, you know, making sure that the lounge stays clean, people are following rules. Um, the esports area is awesome for that. And then finally, marketing. This is my area, um, and I I love talking about the positions here. So we have graphic design positions, social media. Um, a lot of students like are interested in social media, um, and then photography, videography, marketing assistants. Um, really cool ways to just um, promote the university union as well as um, student engagement center events and activities and other things going on in our building. Um, the URL to apply for any jobs is right at the bottom there, um, and I think Lindsay will put it in the chat as well. And then I just wanted to touch on a few reasons why um, working with us is so great. Um, so our positions do have competitive, like, oh my goodness, competitive pay and annual raises. Um, we want to make sure that you get paid. You know, this is an awesome opportunity to build some skills, but also, you know, we want to we want to make sure that you're helping finance your education or maybe have a little extra spending money. Um, we absolutely work around your schedule and classes. I mean, Carolyn said it the best, you know, your your job here is not your first priority and we totally understand that and support that. Um, so we will absolutely work around your schedule. Um, obviously, we are on campus, so if you are also living on campus, you know, you don't have to worry about commuting somewhere. Um, you can work in between classes, which is a big deal for a lot of our students. Um, and then we also have professional development opportunities. We like to get our students together to, you know, either volunteer in the community or on campus. Um, we also attend different diversity, equity and inclusion events together. Um, just ways to build your skills and make you, um, you know, set you up for success post graduation. And then, as I mentioned on the last slide, you know, we do have a lot of positions um, that fit any student's unique talents and skill sets. Um, so like I said, if it's your first job, that's OK. We are just looking for hardworking folks who are willing to put in the time and are responsible um, to help out on our teams. But if also if you, um, you know, have a lot of work experience already, you're looking for a leadership position, um, we have something for you as well. All right. Thanks, Frankie. Um, we are going to turn it over to some of our internal job opportunities now. So with our housing folks, um, first we're going to have Jules kick it off, who is our custodial assistant supervisor. I think I said that right. Um, and she's going to talk about jobs within housing facilities. Hi, yeah, I'm Jules. I am the assistant custodial supervisor for housing um, and I'm just going to talk about some of the positions that we offer in the facilities side of things. Um, we have a few different options during the school year is a little different than summer. 
So during the school year, we have a custodial position. Um, in that role, you take care of like the common areas in the residence halls, um, the lounges, the kitchens, bathrooms, laundry rooms. Uh, you'll work on snow removal and just keep the overall um, living spaces of each resident hall or contemporary apartment um, clean for everybody to be able to enjoy throughout the school year. Uh, we do also have maintenance positions. Um, they help our HVAC, um, our maintenance people, and uh, our um, HVAC electric and maintenance. So they do a lot of painting, checking empty buildings, um, making sure there's no leaks, uh, just re reporting any sort of issues like that. Um, and then we actually have a new position that we're adding this school year uh, called FA, which is facilities assistance. It's um, similar to the maintenance one, but it's a more of an on-call sort of thing. So if any of our maintenance techs end up having to come in for an emergency situation, you do some more helping out with some stuff like that or um, snow removal will be another big part, making sure that everybody can travel safely to and from classes or dining halls if classes happen to get canceled. Um, during the summer, we offer a few other positions. Um, again, we have the maintenance and the custodial, but we also offer a floor care position. Uh, the summer ones are slightly different in, than the school year ones because we actually go into the dorms in the apartments to clean as well. So we'll be deep cleaning areas more in the summer. Um, during the school year, we're able to uh, do awesome things like have super flexible hours. I basically let you pick your schedule. We are no weekends, no holidays. Um, it is only Monday through Friday, 8 to 4.30 are our hours. So you tell me what you would like to work and when, and I just fit you around in different buildings, um, whatever fits your schedule. So there's no minimum amount of hours as well. Uh, we do have a max of 25, but that's pretty standard throughout the school. Um, so being able to offer things like that are really awesome. And then during the summer, we offer 40 hour week work weeks um, and a very competitive wage as well, which does stay updated in our website where you can apply for the different positions. And then we are located here at the number 28, um, that is the housing shop. That's where you'll see uh, us on our lunch break with our meals most of the time. Um, that's where our main hub is and our offices are. So if you uh, go past the trads, that's where we usually are. Um, and that's where most of the students go to check in for like their shifts as well. So that's kind of just like our little hub. Hi, my name is Abby Schultz. I work within housing as their front desk and mailroom manager. There you go, Abby, sorry, you're good. <laughs> okay, am I good now? Yep, you're all set, there you go. Okay. Um, I can reintroduce myself quick in case I cut out. Uh, my name is Abby Schultz. I work within housing as their front desk and mailroom manager. So I work, my office is located in the Henriksen Community Center and the community center is located centrally within most of our residential housing buildings. And this is also where most of our professional staff members have their offices as well. And at the community center, we do a lot of different things. Um, our main focus being helping our students, whether they live on campus or off campus, their parents, and then any summer guests and visitors or vendors we may have. And the community center is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, but more specifically our front desk slash service desk. That is the part of the community center that's always open to students to help them out if they need. 
And at this desk, we do, again, a lot of different things. Our, some of our main things being helping students with housing contracts, room selection. We also offer mailroom services at the community center. We assist students with lockouts if they lock themselves out of their dorm or apartment. It happens all the time. Everybody does it at some point. We also help students with their ID cards if they need help troubleshooting or if it stops working in their door of their dorm or apartment. And we also check out sports equipment and board games to students as well. And then some of you may have seen this at other orientation meetings, but I wanted to include this in this one as well. This is a look at our residential spaces that we offer students. So in the top left corner, that's going to be our dorms. This is where freshmen most typically live. It's a one bedroom, two person per bedroom. And all of our freshman dorms have their own private bathroom. In the top right corner, these are our traditional apartments, two bedrooms, two, per, two people per room. And these also have a full kitchen and a living room area. And then in the bottom left corner, we have our contemporary apartments or contempts. These are our individual bedroom apartments. Typically there are four students per apartment. And then some of our employment opportunities at the community center, our main two positions are the service desk or front desk assistant and our mailroom assistant. The service desk assistant does a lot of things. They are the first face you see when you walk out of the community center. They again, help students lock to who are locked out of their apartments. They will troubleshoot their IDs. They help our students, parents, and guests over the phone, email, in person. They also help students with filling out housing contracts, any housing contract questions they may have. They also assist with move in and move out questions and room selection as well. They also help us office staff members as needed, and they also run those checkouts for the equipment and games to the students. And then we also have our mailroom assistants, and they are mainly responsible for the processing and sorting of incoming and outgoing mail. They also notify students when they have a package available via email. They also help students if they have trouble opening their mailbox or need help finding their combination for their mailbox. And the mailroom is not open 24 hours. They do have shorter hours, which are listed below. They are closed on Saturdays as well as legal holidays. And for both of these positions, the scheduling is similar to facilities. The students get to pick their schedule. Um, we kind of work around their class and what works for them and we make it work. And if you are also interested in seeing more about these job opportunities, the QR code in the bottom right corner will take you directly to our housing employment page. Awesome, thanks Abby. Um, and thank you to all of our presenters. So I'm gonna run through a couple quick closing slides and then we will answer questions from the audience. Um, so again, financial aid and campus employment can help make college more affordable for you. There's tons of opportunities as all of our lovely campus partners brought up. Um, they offer different possibilities for you, different skills to look at, and can really help you develop those lifelong professional skills while you're learning and living here on campus. If you'd like to learn more information about housing, you can follow us at all the fun links here, but all of our campus partners had their information up as well. I highly recommend you check out their stuff for opportunities to get involved, um, see what's going on with them. Sometimes they do awesome giveaways on the dining one and you get free coffee. Um, so it's definitely worth going and checking out all the different social medias for our, our departments. And then last up, we have our last webinar session of the year. It is planning for move-in. So you'll get the whole rundown from our wonderful housing leadership team as we enter the final weeks before you're here on campus with us. So definitely join us on July 26th at 6 p.m. Um, we'll have our director here, our assistant directors, um, all sorts of fun people who can answer your questions and make sure you feel prepared for this move-in season on September 2nd. So thank you all and thank you to our presenters. I've got a couple questions here that we're gonna go through and answer. So I will spotlight the campus partner as we do that so they can kind of answer a little bit or if anyone wants to jump in, they are very welcome to. Um, but with that, let's see what question we wanna do first. So, let's see. Um, one of the first questions was, are supervisors flexible with class schedules? Who would like to answer that one? I know Frankie kind of mentioned it a little bit, but anyone want to take it away? Okay, Frankie, you go for it. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say that 
you know, at least in the university union, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I'm sure that we all share the same values here. Um, we are very flexible with class schedules. Obviously, you're here to go to school and class is your priority. Um, and, you know, we also understand that you're involved in things other than just class. You know, you are involved in student organizations or maybe you have another job. We are more than willing to work around your schedule and make sure that if you want to work with us, we will work with you to help make sure that you get the hours that you need and want. Thanks, Frankie. Anyone else want to chime in on that one or we feel like Frankie got it? <laughs> feel good? Okay, awesome. Um, I do have a couple about financial aid in here for Peter, so let's see. Um, do campus jobs count for work study financial aid? Yeah, absolutely. Um, our students who are eligible for work study um, usually are working uh, on campus. We do have a few community partners that we work with that some students are um, also working with that too. And also just to clarify that you don't need to be eligible for work study to uh, work uh, on campus or work in general. So that's just something if you're eligible for that, that it's available to you in your uh, through uh, FAFSA that you would have that eligibility that you can use that towards a part-time job. Thank you. Alrighty, next up, I think I got a couple more financial aid ones in here. Let's see. Um, is there a deadline for the FAFSA submission? If so, are there any consequences if I don't meet this deadline? Yeah, that's a great question that we get from uh, uh, students uh, in different uh, just variety of, of you know, situations. So uh, there really isn't like a hard deadline, I would say. Uh, we just encourage students to apply for the FAFSA as early as possible so that they can get their aid. Uh, to cover any uh, expenses that they have, uh, but typically the rule of thumb is to, you know, be able to uh, complete the FAFSA during that academic year that you are enrolled in. Uh, typically that's kind of what we encourage students to complete, so that way we can take a look at your FAFSA and see what aid is available to you. Thank you. All right, I'm going to leave you up because I got another one for you. Um, oh gosh, I know there was another one. Ah. Does living on campus impact my financial aid? So in terms of that, uh, it is yes, um, because it's more so of the cost of attendance that is kind of built into a student's budget. So a student who's living on campus compared to maybe living at home, uh, the cost for that is uh, a bit higher for students that live on campus. So certainly uh, that is something that we factor in. But if there's again, if any situations kind of change or you have more specific questions tied into that, feel free to re reach out to our office and we'll be happy to kind of dig in a bit closer and look at your uh, FAFSA and see if there's any adjustments that we need to make. Thank you. All right, got that answer for you. So that one. If I have a work study, how many hours will I need to work per week? So I don't know if anyone wants to share kind of what their minimum hour requirements are, if they have that for the department, or if it's just kind of whatever they're able to work for their student employees. Um, would anyone like to take a shot at that question? Carolyn, you want to go? <laughs> I think you said yours. Um, well, we don't currently partner with work study because we're a third party company, unfortunately. Um, so, but we do kind of follow the guidelines that, you know, students don't work more than 20 hours a week. Thank you. I don't know if there is a minimum for how many hours they can work for work study. Do you know that, Peter? Or like a minimum they have to work? Uh, for work study, no, I think it's kind of really kind of up to the student schedule and usually that kind of depends on um, like what's available to them for the work study hours depending on the position. Uh, so that might kind of be the variation of how much uh, they uh, uh, can work uh, in terms of minimum. I think that's really kind of up to the student what's available in their work study if they are eligible for that. Thank you. Um, does anyone else have minimum requirements for theirs or no? Anyone else want to chime in? No, shaking heads. OK, um, I can speak from experience that I know most of the employers are very willing to work with you for if you have busy weeks, too, and you can only do a couple hours one week. But then when we get closer to the middle of the semester, when it's a little bit more chill, you can work more. Um, a lot of employers are very willing to work with you and figure out what's going to work best in your class schedule to support you so you can be the best student that you can be. Yeah, that was a great question. 
All right, I think that is all of the big questions out of here. So um, with that, I think we're gonna call it for the night. So thank you again to our campus partners for being here. Thank you for Peter uh, for talking to us all about the fun financial aid things. Um, but I think that's gonna be it for the night. So feel free to check out our webinar next month or check out all of our campus web websites for information on specific jobs. Um, I will also post all of the links that were shared tonight in our YouTube description. So you can find all the helpful information right there for you if if you're looking for a specific contact link. But with that, thank you all so much. Have a wonderful night and go Phoenix. Have a great day, everyone.